Sure, I guess uh, the choice that we made in setting up uh, a fund dedicated to smart materials, to advanced materials and material science, uh, uh, has a lot to do with our background. Uh, we are engineers and physicists, uh, and uh, we've been working across uh, the tech transfer process for several years. Uh, and uh, there was a measure set up by the European Investment Fund dedicated to creating uh, tech transfer funds in Italy. And therefore, uh, it was a, just the right combination between our aspirations and the possibility to uh, start with a very powerful LP, uh, which was the European Investment Fund at that time. But uh, it wasn't enough. Uh, um, as um, once you start raising a fund uh, dedicated to advanced materials, uh, you need to engage, uh, as uh, uh, Stefan was saying, uh, uh, corporations, uh, uh, which are the, the real uh, guys who are interested in uh, uh, scouting for new technologies in this field. And therefore, what we did, uh, uh, we set up uh, um, uh, the fund uh, on the assumptions that uh, we were going to look for technologies uh, that were resonating with the interest of our corporate partners. And, uh, and not because we just wanted to convince them to fund the, the, um, uh, our, our fund, but especially because if we could find uh, resonating technologies uh, within the tech transfer early stage uh, domain um, in alignment uh, with the business of the corporations, then the chances that those investments uh, were going to be successful were raising uh, quite a bit. And therefore, that made sense not only to us, but also to the corporation that funded us uh, on the one side, and on the other side, uh, we offered them the potential uh, to co-invest once we could find something re relevant and interesting for them. Therefore, uh, we kind of uh, set up a strategy to um, create a strong link between our capability to dig into the university uh, environment, which is uh, largely um, not easy to reach to corporations, uh, at least in Italy. And, uh, and so we were the systematic tool to dig into that amount of, of uh, reach uh, projects. Uh, and on the other side, uh, we were those who could structure the company in such a way that that be could become interesting uh, also for the corporations. And that alignment allowed us uh, to uh, perform a quite a successful fundraising, which uh, wasn't quick but uh, uh, two years down the line, as Stefan was saying, uh, we're very happy with it. Uh, we're actually having a, a portfolio of, of eight companies invested and uh, we're ready to put down three more investments in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, therefore, we count on the um, the overall strategy uh, targets uh, uh, to an investment periods uh, in five years uh, with roughly uh, between 25 to 30 initiatives. Many of them would, are going to be proof of concepts. Uh, the, the proof of concept is the, the very, very early stage of investment where the company is sometimes not even set up. So we kind of uh, experience uh, uh, initial funding for research projects uh, in the university or research center. It's going to be between 150 and 250,000 uh, uh, kilo euros uh, uh, for the POC. And then once the POC, sh should the POC be successful, then we go on and set up the company going for uh, a seed uh, funding and then a round A, and potentially we could follow on to a round B also. you were talking, I was smiling, as uh, I totally share your, your thoughts. Uh, a, a larger interest in uh, deep tech uh, is facilitating uh, people to realize that there is a business with their research to make and uh, sometimes to, to embrace, uh, even though it's very hard to move from lab to a company. And uh, on the other side, companies have realized that uh, uh, relating to venture capital funds, uh, uh, it's a way to um, overview what's going on uh, to, to decouple complexity in a way between the research environment uh, and the company environment. And therefore, uh, 
uh, it's coming up later than uh, you guys in Germany and France. But uh, in the last two years, uh, many steps have been um, uh, taken to uh, facilitate the process. And uh, we, we start seeing uh, a, a growing vitality in this sector. So uh, good news in this sense. Um, I was reading the question and my first answer would be, uh, uh, yes, okay, TRL, uh, technology readiness level, it's a reference, uh, but it's the result of the evaluation to me and not the, the, the entry point. Uh, there is no other way to measure technologies, especially when you go as far as the labs, uh, um, nothing else but looking at the technology and uh, engaging with the researchers and uh, and then sometimes when you don't reach it, for example, we bumped into some quantum uh, technologies and uh, uh, we needed an expert. Uh, and beside having uh, uh, the proponents, which were extremely prepared and uh, I mean, world renowned in the field, uh, we needed to have uh, a second voice. So you need to go around and look for your expert to double check on what you're dealing with. And in the end, uh, uh, you tend to uh, take for granted the capability of the people given their scientific reputation sometimes, but you measure them on the capability to convert their technology into practical business cases. And so that, that's pretty much the approach that we try to follow. Well, if I may add, uh, there's one thing I'd like to mention. Uh, we go through a systematic uh, review of the team. Uh, assessing what's in place and what's missing. And then we keep track of uh, the, the, the company, uh, allowing them to integrate those professionals or those competencies uh, that they don't have. And um, we do that through a systematic uh, screening uh, and a questionnaire and, and, and then a report that we share with the company. And very in in its uh, in, in most cases it's very much appreciated by them because they don't realize they miss uh, some uh, parts and some bits, and so this is one piece of contribution that we give to build uh, the, the company itself too.